Proverbs 29, 9 states, If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there is no quiet. Proverbs 29, 9. When a wise man has an argument with a fool, it is vanity, because a fool is one who is unwilling to listen. A fool is one who is slothful, not only in their ways, but also in their mindset and the disposition they have towards other people. They don't want to seek resolve. They don't want to have constructive criticism happen to them. They don't want to hear different views and perspectives. Fools stay within their own viewpoints and opinions without even validity or credibility or even factual evidence because they want to live in the way that they deem is fit. Whereas we who are born again, who have believed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and repented of our sins, we have re received the spirit of truth and wisdom. And we are not just called to uh, take that initial leap of faith, but we are called to continue to endure in the faith, to endure in the truth. And when we are walking in wisdom and we are surrounded by those who are wise, we are going to God's word, which is filled with truth and wisdom, we are going to be more betterly prepared with our reactions and our state of mind within arguments. But also when people press us, we need to have uh, constructive, credible answers backed by wisdom and the truth of God's word to people who might have a disagreement. Uh, obviously, no one is perfect, but many times people hold to views without even being able to back it up and, 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 and declare why it is they believe what they believe. And that is the way of a fool. Um, a fool can even believe that which is right, but if they aren't able to back up when pressed certain questions, uh, that's not good. Uh, it's it's like an atheist may even say to a genuine born-again person, uh, uh, believer, they may say, why do you believe what you believe? And we know from uh, Peter and other places in scripture that we're to give a reason for our faith. We're, we're to be those who um, are able to give a reasonable answer to our faith. We don't just say, well, I just believed and that's that. Uh, because when an atheist hears that and an atheist who is truly seeking, like, why, why do you believe what you believe? And we can't give a sound answer that is obviously very problematic. So the fool is not only uh, in the initial standpoint of a fool just being stuck in his ways, but also foolish tendencies can be found by believing in something that's even true, but not taking the time to understand how to answer and give uh, a, a reasonable answer behind what it is we believe. It's not like we have to give these huge, strong, apologetic arguments and know the ontological argument, the teleological argument, and, and all those, but we just need to give a clear answer, and that comes by way even of revealing our testimony and having the courage to reveal, this is what I used to indulge in, this is what I used to believe and think, but praise be to God, he sent his Holy Spirit who has changed me and continues to change me day by day. But when the wise has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs. The fool's going to get angry when the wise man continues to speak and continues to ask questions that reveal the lack of credibility of uh, behind the f fool's belief. And when the fool begins to understand this, he's going to rage, he's going to get angry, he's going to start operating on emotion and attacking the character of the wise man rather than the argument of the wise man. And as this occurs, then he, uh, there's going to try to be, uh, obviously that's by way of a red herring, just completely going off topic. And then uh, from the original discussion argument is at hand. But then not only that, but the fool's going to laugh at why the wise man uh, believes what he believes. There's going to be a mocking spirit, uh, a scoffing spirit that laughs and ridicules the wise men for believing what they believe, even though it's sound, it's backed by credibility, there's reasonable uh, factual evidence behind what they believe, there's, there's understanding to be had behind why that belief is the way it is or why that wise man thinks things should be done this way. But the fool only rages and laughs and there is no quiet. And so that's why we need to not continue with the fool, but cease from striving when we recognize the disposition in the internal state of a fool. Because if we're trying to convince a fool, we're wasting our time. Uh, and that's why Proverbs also declares, uh, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own strength. But right after that, it also warns, Answer a uh, 
fool according to his folly. And um, I'm paraphrasing. I forgot the last part. But basically, when we do answer a fool, sometimes it's to our ruin. So sometimes uh, when we answer a fool, we need to discern the situation. Because many times when we answer a fool, we can just be wasting our time. We're going back and forth. There's no progress. And we're, we're just wasting time. But then there's other times where a fool might say something, and if we let that slide uh, and we don't speak, we're going to allow the fool to continue in his ways, whereas there might be a reason, uh, an opportunity and uh, within that current situation where we need to respond and reply to what was just said, uh, lest he continue to think he's wise in his own ways. And the differentiation within this scripture is we should answer a fool according to um, his foolish ways by ways of questioning because that will get him thinking and then the fool will either understand that and then really begin to reflect on it and hopefully start to come by way of what of uh, wisdom or they're going to get angry and rage and, and scoff as proverbs 29 9 declares but sometimes we want to cease from answering a fool and this comes by way of just a directed uh, comment that would just um, just pierce them basically in their viewpoint and their argument and just reveal the lack of knowledge behind it. Um, sometimes we are called to do that, but other times we are just called to refrain because again, we are to discern the fool, uh, the person's internal state, their mindset, and do they have an openness and a teachable spirit? Because if they don't, we don't even need to strive to have a conversation with them because it's going to go nowhere. So may we be those who are wise. May we ask that God would give us the wisdom to discern, is this someone I should continue to talk to? Is this someone that uh, is open to listening and hearing potentially rebuke or hearing a different perspective? Or is this just going to go nowhere? Because why should we waste our time with those who are so set in their ways, especially wrong ways, um, that they're not going to change because true wisdom comes by way first and foremost from the all-wise God um, Which we know to be the Trinity the Father Son and Holy Spirit. We know that from I believe Romans 16 uh, 27 the all-wise God, but then wisdom comes by way of God's Word and his spirit leading and then after that wisdom can come by way of others and being willing to listen and receive rebuke receive instruction because if we never change, if we're not open to changing, we're going to remain in our ways and we're never going to grow. And a lack of growth leads to a lack of discernment. And a lack of discernment will forever continue to seek to validate that which one believes, which most likely due to our carnal nature is a belief that is not warranted. So may we be those who are wise and do not entertain uh, arguments with fools lest we just continue to hear them rage and laugh and ultimately there isn't going to be any quiet or rest because the fool's restless spirit and being convicted by wisdom is going to be projected on us and that may disrupt some of our peace even though we believe what is true and accurate. Nonetheless, a fool will continue to write the uh, terrible comments they're going to continue to speak uh, ill about us, and it's just not worth uh, pursuing those relationships and those conversations which lead nowhere.